So to understand the slave woman giving birth to the mistress, you have to understand the subject of riba. And then, because she is now a slave woman, she's going to be used, her womb is going to be used, and go, she'll be paid, of course, surrogate mother, to produce a baby. For that woman who cannot have a baby. Because Allah created the male and the female the way he created the night and the day. Did you know that? Yeah. Allah created the male and the female the way he created the night and the day. He says that in the Quran. And then having said that, he said, Inna sa'ayakum lashatta. You are functionally different. But in Akhiru Zaman, they say that's nonsense. The Quran is nonsense. Anything a man does, a woman can do. And so the night can try to become day. It's called the feminist revolution. But in the process of the night trying to become day, she's pursuing her own career now. Very good, mashallah, mashallah. She's pursuing her own career. Nobody ever said you don't have any brains. Of course you have brains. Our mothers have brains. Sometimes more than our father. Nobody ever said that you don't have brains. But she's pursuing her career. And now she's going to work in the morning facing the morning traffic like everybody. And coming home in the evening facing the evening traffic and everybody. And then you have to buy, you know, the pre-cooked food. Yeah. And uh, the children, so put them in a daycare center, put them with the next door neighbor and so on. But because she is pursuing a, a career in which the night is trying to become day, something happens. She loses her femininity, and in, she even loses her fertility and she cannot have children so she has to go to a fertility clinic and pay lots of dollars to try to become pregnant and when she cannot become pregnant then of course the slave woman this is a slave woman giving birth to her mistress but the sperm which is used to fertilize the egg has grown so weak because of all the radiation from your cell phones, you saw, and all the internet and so on, and the pollution and so on. The male sperm has become so weak, you cannot produce a male child anymore. It's just only baby girls all around. And the world is filled with women. And so women will rule tomorrow. And so she gives birth to her mistress. Now then, not only did Jibra'il al-Islam come to deliver to us eschatology as the most important of all subjects, but something else he did. He gave us the methodology how to study eschatology, how to study ilm al zaman. This is the most, the toughest of all, this one. You have to begin with Islam and then you have to grow to Iman and Iman is not sold in the stock market, no. Iman is something which enters into the heart. Be conscious of the fact that Allah hovers between a man and his heart. Allah knows what is in the heart, whether there is Iman or not. But then something beyond Iman. You cannot study eschatology with only Iman. The angel asked, what is Al-Ihsan? And the Prophet replied, Allah's blessings be upon him, that Al-Ihsan is an ta'bud Allah ka'annaka tara. That you should worship Allah as though you are seeing him. That you should worship Allah as though you are 
seeing him. But wait a minute. Hold it. When Musa salam, went up the mountain, he said to Allah, Arini, Anzur ilaik, show me, show me yourself. I want to see you. Show me yourself. I want to see you. And Allah replied and he said, Lantarani. Not possible, Tabule. Not possible. You can't see me. No Musa alayhi salam. You can't see me. Now with these eyes, you can't see me. But when the companions ask, O Messenger of Allah, would we see Allah on Judgment Day? We meaning, I'm not talking about Barak Obama, I'm talking about the followers of the Prophet Would we see Allah on Judgment Day? He replied rhetorically so. Do you have any difficulty in seeing the sun when it is midday? They said, no. He asked, do you have any difficulty in seeing the sun when it is the full moon? We just had the full moon one week ago. This is the 24th day of, Shaban, uh, of Shawwal. He said, did you have any difficulty in seeing the full moon? They said, no. He said, that's how you see your Lord. Is there a conflict between Quran and Hadith? The Quran says you can't see him, the Hadith says you'll see him. Is there a conflict? No, there's no conflict. No, there's no conflict. Because the Quran says that we have, in addition to these eyes, that the heart can also see. This is epistemology, the branch of knowledge which studies knowledge and how is knowledge acquired. Epistemology. So when the Quran says, you'll never see me, you cannot see Allah with these eyes. And when the Hadith says, you can see Allah, it is with the internal eye. So, أَن تَعْبُدَ اللَّهَ كَأَنَّكَ تَرَاهُ بِعَيْنِ الْقَلْبِ Al-Ihsan is that you should worship Allah as though you are seeing Him with your heart. So you cannot study eschatology the way you study other subjects at university. Not at all. To study eschatology to study the world at this time when events are constantly unfolding so strangely you need not only you need not only the knowledge that is acquired externally but in addition to that you need knowledge which comes directly from Allah to the heart so when Musa alayhi salam said, you remember? I am the most learned of all men. Do you remember? Shake your head. Huh? I am the most learned of all men. I don't have to narrate the story to you. And Allah says, no, you're not. Actually, Allah is not speaking to Musa alayhi salam. You've got to read between the lines. Allah is talking to a people who believe that they are the elite of mankind. We are the chosen of the Lord God. We are the chosen people. We are the elite. The rest of mankind, excuse my language, the rest of mankind, particularly the Palestinians, are like cockroaches before us. We are the elite. We have the most knowledge of all. So Allah is not speaking to Musa alayhi salam. He's speaking to the followers of Musa alayhi salam. 
who believe that they are the elite of mankind. And Allah says, no, you are not the most learned. There's one more learned than you. And when Musa alayhi salam meets with Khidr alayhi salam, and I have a little booklet outside, it will only take you one hour to read it. <laughs> it's called In Search of Khidr's Footprints in Akhirul Zaman. In Search of Khidr's Footprints in Akhirul Zaman. To meet with Khidr, to meet the most learned of all men, to meet the only one who can read the world in Akhirul Zaman, to understand what is the meaning of Brexit, what is the significance and implication of Brexit? You need more than an economics degree. You need more than a PhD in monetary economics. You need more than expertise in international monetary economics to understand Brexit. Or, you know what happened in Turkey. The coup d'etat was, which was <laughs> an unsuccessful coup d'etat. Hmm? And uh, now, uh, I don't know whether you have this expression in Malay, a Trojan horse, a Trojan horse, you know, you slip, slip the horse inside and you have your soldiers hidden inside the horse. And, uh, Trojan horse. Uh, in French, I was told it's called a uh, a cheval de toit, a cheval de toit. So now Turkey is being prepared to become the Trojan horse for Russia. <laughs> In order to be able to understand these important events which are unfolding in the world, you need more than a PhD in economics and in political science. Yes, this is the message we're giving to the world today from Surah Al-Amin in Sitapak. <laughs>